morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right, you're at a content conference. What are we gonna talk about except storytelling, right? Storytelling, everybody's talking about storytelling right now. Or we're gonna talk about how to make your storytelling better. A little something to start you out. Oh, volume. Stories of survival and triumph. Comedy and tragedy. Where be your jives now? Your gambles, your songs. Stories older than any living thing. And stories so new they aren't even finished. Yes, we love stories. They awaken our curiosity. The date of the broadcast was 1939. Our fears. They teach, entertain, and inspire us. This will be the day. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, how about that? That's a way to kick off a presentation, right? Get some video in there, get some excitement. Well, I'll tell you, we've got a lot of video in this presentation, right? Because videos are a great way to augment your story. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So why are stories important? Right, ultimately, stories are frameworks. Stories are containers for ideas, right? They're like a virus. Stories carry through cultures, they carry across continents, and they connect us as human beings. So ideas in the abstract are really hard to tell, right? You can convey ideas to people, but it's really hard. So it's easier if I take that idea and I fold it into a story. Like, here's a great idea. Don't walk by yourself in the woods. Well, what does that mean? All right, Little Red Riding Hood capsulates that great, right? Little Red's out walking in the woods by herself. Haha, <laughs> she meets a wolf. Right, there goes the story. Stories make us laugh, right? They really do. They make us cry. By the way, this is voted as the most tear-jerking scene of any movie. That's the E.T. end of E.T. But stories ultimately make us do something, right? They make us take action. Movies are great examples of stories. You've seen some of these movies. Awesome, right? Epic, fantastic. Okay, I got a Harrison Ford thing going here, sorry. I'll switch it up, a little out of Africa. Pokemon the movie? No, no, I lie. I will never forgive my kids for taking me to this. This is a horrible story. But really, digital changes everything. For the first time, we're able to have conversations with our audience around our story. The ways we tell those stories have grown as numerous as the tales themselves. And the tools we use to tell stories are transforming too. What was once labor intensive and cost prohibitive is now free and easy. Once storytelling and story listening was a ritual. Now it's simply rampant. Now the world is drowning in stories. Every moment from every angle, every last person on earth is being told something by somebody. Great storytelling is swept aside by gizmos, squeaks, and bangs. Now the gadgets are winning. And we're doing something we've never done before. We've stopped listening. In fact, getting people to listen to your message is fast becoming one of the great challenges of our time. So now what? Do storytellers just keep shouting ever louder, or do we simply shut up? So the cool thing about that, right, even though people aren't listening as well as they used to, digital opens up an opportunity for us as storytellers, for us as people who make content to connect to our audiences. And that's because stories now in the digital world can be all about apps and images and videos and transmedia, right? We've heard this term tossed about, stories that are told in different channels as part of one big story. It's all about engagement. For the first time in history, for the first time, storytellers can have conversations with their readers and with their audience. Creates a level of intimacy that we've never had before. As marketers, we are actually at the sort of forefront of a revolution to be totally melodramatic, right? And this is exciting stuff. So what makes a good digital story? Wait, strike that, that's wrong. What makes a good story digitally? Hold on, hold on, not quite right. What makes a good story digitally for business? Right, because obviously stories that you write for fiction and stories that you write for other mediums are different than B2B stories, so you think. All right, so get out your pens and paper, okay? Because I'm going to show you right now what you need to do to make awesome stories. Okay, who are we kidding? You guys all have laptops and tablets, break those out. <laughs> Number one, you have to be connected. 
right? You have to connect your audience to each other, yourself to your audience. You have to make the story universal. So what you begin to realize as you write stories for B2B is that the people you're writing to are just like everybody else. They go to grocery stores, they go to gas stations, they buy books, they buy movies, they act like people. You have to treat them like people. Number two, you have to be committed to this, right? Writing stories and changing the way that businesses deal with their audiences, becoming a publisher, I've heard about that, is what big companies are doing. Coca-Cola is committing tens of millions of dollars to revamp the way they communicate with their audience. Look at this website. Food, jobs, sustainability. Oh, there's some Coke products down there in the far right corner. They're not about writing about Coke anymore. They're about writing about content to help their audience. They want their audience to connect to each other and they want to connect to their audience. Number three, it's got to be about the customer. I'll keep saying this. There's a reason for that. If you start telling stories about your product or your company, your audience is gonna go somewhere else. You can't connect to them emotionally like that. You have to make the story about them. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say, maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay, wire feed sacks and shoe scraps who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40 hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back, put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. So God made a farmer. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake, and disc, and plow, and plant, and tie the fleece, and strain the milk. Somebody who'd bail a family together with the soft, strong bonds of sharing. Who would laugh, and then sigh, and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. So here you have a story about customers. Actually in the video, there's really only two product placements except the end. The truck shows up a couple of times because it's not about the truck. It's about the people that use the truck. The next one is character. This is critical. How can you have a story without a character? because characters are what people connect to. 
right? They don't connect to the thing they're using or the product you're talking about or even your company. They connect to these wonderful characters you create. Look at you, so dashing. Come on. Nowadays, lots of people go by themselves. No, they don't. Yeah. Hey, son. Have fun tonight. That's a great character, right? Everybody's thinking back, oh, if I only had that moment, those 10 seconds of my life back, I could have made a huge decision that would have changed it. Now, before you say he's just biased, he drives an Audi, I do not drive an Audi, I drive that car, which is better than an Audi, and it's faster and it sounds awesome. Anyway. <laughs> Crescendo, your story has to have a reason. It's gotta have an end. You can't just carry a story on forever, right? And it's the end that wraps up everything in a nice, tidy little boat. 16, 29, 32. Woohoo! Yes! Oh, hoo -hoo! Come on, Wilson, we're going home. Oh, the betrayal, the betrayal. <laughs> Hamlet's got nothing on that, right? That's, uh, that's a great ending, a nice tie up to a story. Ha ha, okay, so I couldn't come up with a word for like metrics with using C's, so I made one up. Be accountable, right? Your stories have to be measurable. You have to be able to say who's watching my story, when are they dropping off, where are they watching it, on what devices, how are they engaging, you gotta make it business focused, right? Because then the people who hire you and pay your salary are really happy with you. So let's look, look at that. This, this isn't easy to say, but we found a better way to analyze our marketing data. Better than me? Yeah, a faster way to figure out what things mean. I've worked here 5,732 days. Yeah, good on the math. 
but not on the analytics. And three hours, two minutes. Right, okay. That's a lot of days. Yeah. So I couldn't really find a funny video about measurement, but I thought that that was apropos, right? You have to be thinking about analytics. You have to be thinking about how to make my story actionable in the business world. Consistent, consistent is critical, right? You have to make sure that your story and the message stays the same across devices, because if it doesn't, if it breaks, your audience is gonna go away. This next one does a fantastic job of retaining this message across devices and around the world. 3.2 billion comments are posted online every single day. You live in a social world, but are you working in one? A smarter workforce is a social workforce, connecting employees to experts, insights to actions. It's a production line of knowledge that never stops building. How social is your business? That's what I'm working on. I'm an IBMer. Let's build a smarter planet. So IBM has a fantastic campaign, I'm an IBMer, let's make a smarter planet, and they've carried that message everywhere, really around the globe, done a great job with it. But your message really has to be consistent, not just in the way it's presented, but across those devices. These things are connected, right? Google did a fantastic study last year called the Multi-Screen World. They showed us with data that we're all using all of our devices every part of the day, our phones, our tablets, our PCs, and our TVs to consume content. If your message is inconsistent, you're gonna lose your audience. Number eight, conversion. Okay, right, this is where the rubber meets the road. Some of those content awards last night, like $1.8 billion for Xerox and Pipeline, yeah, okay, I'm still drooling over that, right? That's like Uber conversion. So here's a funny little video about a company that's all about conversion. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of dollarshaveclub.com. What is dollarshaveclub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. <laughs> Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. I don't know about you, when I first saw that, I thought it was a joke. It was a funny joke, it was really well done, but that's a company that's all about conversion, right? They are about selling you razors, literally. You can actually go sign up for that service. As you can tell, I don't use it. All right, keep calm. I'm asking you to be storytellers. You're looking at me like, I'm not a, I'm not a storyteller. I mean, you know, who are big storytellers, right? There's some famous storytellers, I'm not that guy. What am I gonna do? How can I make my story better? Instead of volume and velocity, maybe, just maybe, we should start refocusing on the basics, on telling stories with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Boy meets girl. Boy loses girl. Boy gets girl back. Ah, nice, remember? The future belongs to storytellers who offer us a genuine reason to pay attention. To companies that craft stories so compelling that people flock to listen, that tell their stories consistently at every touch point. Web, tablet, smartphone. So what's the one thing that connects all of those stories I showed you and all of those C's? It's that narrative arc. It's that beginning, middle, and end. 
it gives the audience a reason to want to associate with the character. I want to see this guy win. I want to see that dog get back to his master with the lottery ticket, only to find he's totally betrayed. But still, there's a narrative arc. There's a reason, and you follow it along. And that, that's what pulls those heartstrings, right? Because number nine, once again, sorry, I couldn't find a C word for emotional, so I just made one. C emotional, right? It's got to have that emotional connection because really stories evoke emotion, right? We went over that. Movies, they get you excited, they get you jazzed, they get you connected with the, with the characters and with the plot and what's going to happen, right? They trigger something in our brains, really. Well, there's a lot of research right now about the fact that narrative arc releases endorphins and that's what creates that emotional reaction. I think that's probably why marketers right now are getting so excited about storytelling because there's something measurable behind it, right? Big picture of a neuron, so I toss that in there. Really though, think about it this way, right? Stories evoke emotions, right? Emotions release endorphins, therefore, stories release endorphins. Woo, algebra paid off. Simple as that, right? Narrative arc is what connects us to our audience, gives them a reason to want to engage with our story. And that's ultimately what it's about. Our stories help us reach intimacy. Holding hands, very intimate. When you think about it though, there's a way to get to intimacy faster. There is, you probably already guessed it. I've done a lot of it here, video, right? Video's not hard anymore, it's easy. And because it's easy, you should use more of it. People are watching video like there's no tomorrow, right? Video is gonna take up most of the IP traffic by 2017. People love them. And if you can build your stories in video, you can get a piece of that engagement and a piece of that energy that's out there right now. So think about it this way, there's a digital relationship pyramid. I just made this up, but, it, but it's great. I'm really proud of this, it's copyright, right? So we start at the bottom, is awareness. People are aware of your brand, they're aware of your company. Hi, you're Walmart. I don't shop there, but I know what Walmart is. I don't have a relationship with them, I just, I'm aware of them. Acquaintance, yeah, I've been in a couple Walmarts before. I kinda know what the store's about, I know what they're trying to pitch me. I might even get an email from them, right? I'm an acquaintance. A friend, well, I shop at Walmart all the time. I shop every week there. I, mean, I like what they offer, I like what they're telling me about saving prices. I'd probably tell my friends about Walmart. Go, go to Walmart. Confidant, these are people that really trust you. I, I'm, I'm out there telling all my friends, you're an idiot for shopping at Target, you should go shop at Walmart. Walmart's better, Walmart's the best store in the world. And this last one, BFF, eh. This is our best friend. We want all of our customers to be BFFs because they go out there and they evangelize not only our message, but our stories. And so how do you get there faster? You run up the stairs. Well, you run up the stairs with video. Video gets you to the top of the pyramid where your BFF is waiting much faster. How many times will you have to touch a customer across channels without video before they get close to being a BFF. I'm gonna say it's a lot more than if you use video. All right, remember those C's. Look at that, it's like a lecture. I'm giving you the recap right before the quiz. It's gone. <laughs> no, really. Class is out, go, leave, shoo. Go write some stories, right? Write them that entice, engage, excite. Write stories that are epic. Not that story, that story's already been done, but it's epic. Right? Shoot, your audience is waiting for you to write stories. Thanks. We have time for questions? No? All good? Thanks, guys.